Engineers at Japan's Fukushima plant continue work on emptying highly radioactive water from one of the nuclear reactors there. The latest tests show that radiation levels in the sea near the damaged facility have spiked. On Tuesday, Japan raised the level of nuclear alert at the plant to the maximum of seven, putting it on par with the Chernobyl disaster. Recovery efforts came under threat too as a series of powerful aftershocks hit the area near the power station. It came a month after that massive earthquake and tsunami devastated the country, leaving over 13,000 people dead. Monitoring stations around the world have been picking up small amounts of radioactive particles spreading from Fukushima. We're now joined by environmental expert Christopher Busby. He's on the line from Aberystwyth University in Wales, Great Britain. Thanks very much for being with us. Uh, four weeks on, the plant's operator TEPCO is still struggling to regain control of those nuclear reactors and stop the spread of radioactive material from the plant. Why has the progress been so slow? Well, because, the, the, uh, as I said long ago, and it takes me no pleasure to have been proved right. The, uh, the accident was really much more serious than anybody admitted at the time, and it's still more serious than, than people ha are admitting now. Uh, one of the problems, of course, is that you can't get close to the reactors because they are still fissioning. There's still material there that is producing radioacti radioactivity as a result of a fission process. Uh, um, many of the reactors are, are damaged to the point that fuel is coming out of them. And you just can't work under those conditions, and nor can electronic instruments work under those conditions, because what happens is that the microchips that run the robots just don't operate when the radiation field gets up to a certain level. Yeah, indeed. When I spoke to you a few weeks ago, you were among the few talking most darkly about this. You were underlining how serious you thought the actual situation was. It's something at the time, I recall, uh, not really being echoed from Japan. But now, of course, as of yesterday, Japan has raised the severity level of that nuclear danger to the maximum of seven, puts the situation, as I've been mentioning, on par with the Chernobyl disaster. I know you're not particularly surprised by this, but can you, can you explain why that has only happened now? Why has this level only just been raised? It kind of went up and up, and then yesterday reached the maximum. Well, if you look back into history, into the history of the Chernobyl disaster, exactly the same thing happened. People tried to talk down the disaster. In some ways, I, I, I feel that this was because they couldn't quite believe it themselves. There was an element of psychological denial here. But uh, on the other hand, the, we do know that the nuclear industry is very powerful, it's a very powerful lobbying system, and there's an enormous amount of money uh, running on the back of the nuclear industry through uranium shares and people who have shares in the development of nuclear and so on. So it would be an absolute disaster to have to admit that this was as serious as it was. And I think it is shockingly irresponsible, ne nearly criminally irresponsible, for these people to have talked down the accident in the way that they did. Because what, it will, what, what, what will have happened is that people will have believed them and it will not have acted in such a way as to save themselves from radioact radioactivity and radiation damage. So in even it, now we have... Very, sorry? Yeah, I was going to say, Christopher, so as briefly as you can, um, what is the real picture here as you see it from the information that you've garnered from what you've seen? What do you think really is going on there? And should the Japanese government be doing more at this, at this very moment as we're speaking? Okay. Well, it, 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 there is serious contamination on the ground out to 100 kilometers, and there's less serious contamination out to 200 kilometers. There's significant contamination in Tokyo, and even to the south of Tokyo. So in calculations that I've made in the last two weeks, and I've just come back from Berlin where I gave a paper on this, in my estimation, on the basis of the risk model of the European Committee on Radiation Risks, about 400,000 people will develop cancer in the 200 kilometer radius if they are not moved out. We're talking about 7.8 million people living inside that 200 kilometer radius. So why aren't and they being the moved out, Christopher? Why, why, why are you one of the few, one of the low voices saying this? Why aren't we hearing more of these uh, grave consequences and warnings that, 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 that you're giving? I'm basing my predictions on, on the health effects of the Chernobyl accident. And I was in Berlin talking to a, a lot of uh, researchers from, from the Chernobyl area who've been looking into the effects of the Chernobyl accident. And on the basis of those figures, it's possible to predict the number of, of cancers that will develop in Fukushima. And also along the coast, I have to say, because the, the marine sediment is now becoming contaminated and the shellfish will concentrate the, uh, the radioactivity. It's an, it's an absolute disaster. Anyway, this is my prediction. And I gave you my prediction some time ago, and you remember mm -hmm. I was proved right. Indeed. So here's my prediction again. And uh, we shall see. What's it going to mean for people currently in that exclusion zone, people in the evacuation zone? Will they ever be able to go back home? 
I don't think so, no. I think that it will be like the Chernobyl exclusion zone and people will be kept out. I mean, it may be that they will say that you can go back and it's all safe and, and so forth, but I don't think that they will. And I don't think anybody believes them now anyway. My, my people in Japan tell me that there's an enormous rage in Tokyo and in the areas around Fukushima about the way in which this information has come out so slowly and, and, and uh, in, such a, in such a difficult way. And, and even some of this information can be shown to be wrong. I mean, we, we, we've, we've been able to find out, figure out that the IAEA uh, uh, um, data that they gave is actually not correct. They, they've downplayed the levels of contamination. We can see that this is quite easy. By, by, by making cal calculations. Christopher Busby, you're talking to us from uh, Aberystwyth, Wales environment expert. As you are, thank you for being on the programme. Your insight most valuable.